the problem is, and this is why I'm so massive and I speak about this a lot, the brothers who get married, right, who are married and uh, like, for example, are starting to have children, etc., they really resonate with everything I say. In fact, they're like, why didn't we get told this when we were younger? So, yeah. But the problem is the brothers that are younger, that are not married, when I say to them something which sounds ludicrous because it goes against society and therefore against the norm, they say, wow, which, are you saying 80% of people are unhappy? Well, I didn't say that, right? But there is an element of truth to 80% of people are living paycheck to paycheck. all and welcome to another episode of the optimized muslim podcast going back to the interview series after quite some time i think the last one was in september of last year um and today i have with me brother abu musa um who's very kindly agreed to feature so assalamu alaikum and jazakallah khairan for joining uh, brother wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh barakallahu fee for having me um yeah i appreciate you bearing with me i know this is a little later than than what we wanted to do but no i appreciate you bearing with me and and honoring me on on your podcast no i definitely appreciate the time um and i appreciate that you stuck with the commitment as well so like i was saying before um so i wanted to kind of first of all say that i've not really spoken that much about finance and money these kind of topics on this project it's more but obviously that's a key part of life that comes into it um so i just wanted to the reason also that i don't really have that many interview guests is generally i'm guided by my interests and like the current phase of my life rather than just having like strict rotor to like get guests on so currently since last year i would say i'm more into like um, working from home um self-employment started like side hustle doing reselling and stuff so your content kind of spoke to me at this stage um and also just a quick kind of preface is that we're going to be talking about money and stuff because I know a lot of people have issues that come up for them. The intention is the main thing. And for us, the, I watched your content and that definitely comes through. The main thing is why we're doing this. And the reason for that is so that it can facilitate a more Islamic lifestyle generally, more freedom and everything else. Yeah. So just wanted to say that and then um, to start off with. And I wanted to plug your YouTube channel first and foremost because... I hadn't actually watched it that much before. I watched some of your Instagram, but Alhamdulillah, it's like it's a proper sick content on there. Like, I appreciate, wait, that, I appreciate that. When people and I'm someone that like consumes a lot of self development content from non Muslims, Muslims. So when people watch it, like all these topics we're going to discuss are just kind of little tidbits of the main topic that you've probably already got a more detailed in um, like uh, um, episode on. Or video sure. one so i definitely recommend people subscribe and check that out so first of all brother um i just wanted you to give like a quick synopsis background of like how you got where you are currently and then we'll branch off into different topics yeah, no, problem. no problem no problem no problem so i guess uh, a little bit about myself um i obviously you know went to school went to college university did the whole um academic uh route um after university, basically, I wanted to actually become a police officer um, and I didn't become a police officer. But um, second year of university, I think everyone goes through that. I don't know what to do. I'm not sure what to do. What shall I go into, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe sometimes we're at an age where, you know, we're also a little bit unsure. And I was also at that phase, basically, of my life. So um, third year of university, basically, I understood one thing, and that was my main skill was speaking interacting building rapport and so it was quite evident that i would i would do okay in sales basically and so that's where my interest um grew um to pursue sales um, i got a job into recruitment i worked in recruitment straight out of university stayed in recruitment for about um you know five six years and then alhamdulillah i set up my own company about three four years ago but just during that process, there were many things that I was realizing. And that was, um, you know, I started practicing my deen in, in the second in second year of university. Um, and I remember thinking to myself when I left university and started working a job. And I remember thinking, how am I possibly going to be able to seek knowledge 
practice my deed. And I remember really like being worried about that, basically. And in fact, I remember my first day of Salah, and I've mentioned this a few times before, but the first, uh, so my first day of work, I came home, I was tired, and I went to Jama in Isha. And I am not, anyone knows me, they know I am not an emotional person at all. Like, Allah, I find it very difficult to be emotional. But that Salah was very emotional for me because it was as if my body wasn't working with me. It was as if my brain was saying, how are you going to do this every day? As in go to work and then come to Juma for Isha. So I was very, it was very, it was like a, and I, I, you know, eight, nine years on, and I still remember that day. So now today I try to be, uh, you know, I try to help the youth. I try to help the Muslims. I try to uh, advise where I can because I've seen things that maybe others have not. Um, so yeah, now today I'm trying to put content out on social media. Uh, obviously, you know, today we're running a few more businesses now, but the idea is still to continue help the Muslims um, and guide them where maybe I didn't have guidance. Jazakallah khairan. Yeah, definitely. I think um, looking at your content, there's very relevant bits of advice there and um, I think you do treat it as like giving the advice that you wish someone had given to you and that's on your about page as well um, so it's definitely appreciated and Jazakallah khairan for putting all that out there um, so first thing I wanted to say is like let's start with why would you advise or encourage Muslims to try to become self-employed or have their own businesses, or at least um, try and change the environment or what they can so that it's more conducive to practicing the deen? Yeah, so I think, one, it's, it's interesting because I think I have this conversation with some of the closest people around me, and I have a very harsh opinion in the sense that I believe everyone should at least try, right? As often people will say to me, yeah, but everyone can't. And that's true, that's actually factual, that not everyone will be able to build a route for themselves. However, everyone can try to, right? Because unless everyone tries to, how will they ever know whether they can start a company, be self-employed, work for themselves? You will never know until you try. Um, so that's something I push quite, quite a lot. But the reason for that is, is, is quite simple. It's because as Muslims, the, our main reason to be on the dunya in the dunya is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not to say you cannot worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are working a job, but it's very difficult to balance everything when you are working a job. And so, for example, you can be completely content and you can be a, an amazing Muslim, seek ilm and do everything whilst doing a job. Okay, that, that's a factual reality and it's 100% true. Having said that, it's very difficult now to go work your job if you're now, for example, let's, let's take away the fact that you're not working from home, okay? Let's say you're going into your job. Now, you're coming home in the evenings, um, say, for example, you're living with your parents. Many people who are working jobs right now will know that they experience this. They come home, they are tired and they are unable to even have a healthy conversation with their parents because they're so tired from work and they just want to slouch on the sofa it's reality it's, it's what i did as well by the way so don't think like you know if, if if you feel like that that don't feel like that's abnormal that's not in fact many of us feel like that when you're going work at 7 30 8 o'clock in the morning coming home at 5 36 and you've been working all day you do just want to sit there and do nothing for two hours right and that's normal um you know and then obviously a lot of the times we sometimes rush our prayers Sometimes, you know, for Juma, we might find it hard. Sometimes we might want to move to, you know, Muslim lands, for example. But that becomes all very difficult uh, if you are reliant on your job. And that is what it comes down to. If you are reliant on your job, that's when it can become an issue. Yeah, definitely, brother. And one thing I'll add is it also depends on the phase of life that you're going through. Because me currently, I'm still employed, but I work four days a week from home right but it wasn't always like that like similar I think I'm a similar age to yourself and for like five years I was living away from home um, working five days a week kind of thing at a law firm now because I'm not because at that time I wasn't married mm. and I'm into the whole self-development thing but it's very difficult as in like you literally have to be like a maniac you know <laughs> you know if yeah. you want to do everything if you want to do the nine to five 
and then you want to learn Arabic on the side, do some seeking ilm on the side, which I know you've spoken about. And then you also want to go gym. Like mm -hmm. if you think about your average Monday to Friday day, there were, there were times where you're getting like an unsustainable amount of sleep that yes. I know you're not going to be able to maintain that in t thirties. And then when you get married, I think I once heard a scholar say that like whatever free time you have, divide it in half when you get married, like account for that. Yeah, well. divide that in half again when you've got kids right so you're left with you have to factor that in so and then one thing I, I would say is like you can be content but understand that the pain points are only going to grow yes. you know like like you mentioned that as well like the pain points of like what when you're on your own you can live kind of like a stoic existence you know like oh i'm not phased by anything roll with the punches that kind of thing what well, once you start getting responsibilities Yes, exactly. that's when that situation changes, isn't it, bro? And the problem is, and this is why I'm so massive and I speak about this a lot. The brothers who get married, right, who are married and uh, like, for example, are starting to have children, etc. They really resonate with everything I say. In fact, they're like, why didn't we get told this when we were younger? So, yeah. But the problem is the brothers that are younger, that are not married, when I say to them something which sounds ludicrous because it goes against society and therefore against the norm, they say, oh, which, are you saying 80% of people are unhappy? Well, I didn't say that, right? But there is an element of truth to 80% of people are living paycheck to paycheck, right? 80%, you know, a lot of people, and we won't go into percentages, but a lot of people now need their wives to work for example, right? And so uh, you only start understanding this. I mean, how many of us? So I'll ask you the question, actually, because I like to, I like to ask the other person the question, right? So you went to university, right? Yeah. And did you, and did you uh, work a job or anything like that when you were in uni, college or any, anything like that? To be honest, I did a couple of summer jobs, you know, when mm -hmm. I came back, because you get like three months, which was a good, just a little quick one, which was a good experience because I was doing warehouse work. Okay. So you get to okay. see like the potential of like okay. where you could end up kind of thing, right? So Good. it's a little wake up call. When did you first see and understand tax? Not even, probably, obviously you get tax from your income and you see it on the pay slip, but yes, it, okay. even then it doesn't really affect you because it's coming out automatically. Now yeah. I have to file my own tax for this year because of my side yes. hustle. So that's yes. when I have to start thinking about it more. But what I'm saying is most people do not even understand what tax is, how tax works and how yeah. anything about it. And so, for example, most people, most people will actually go to school, go college, go university and have no idea to what even tax is because they never taught tax unless you're doing something wrong along, for example, you know, accounting, et cetera, et cetera. So the point now being is tax is a massive part of your income. In fact, in reality, it's 30 to 40 percent of your income, but no one ever teaches you about it. But as soon as you leave, so when someone says to you, and I, and I will, and the individual will not remember this, and I'll give you an example. There was a, a young brother I spoke to who goes to LSE and he is a doctor or practicing to be a doctor. And he said he wants 80 to 90,000 pounds a year. And when I asked him the question, how much is that to you a month? He said to me, eight or 9,000 pounds a month, right? He's one of the smartest people around, okay? So one second, one second. He is one of the smartest people around, but he would not know. Um, he did not know how much it was to him a month. And, and the reality is that most people, when they're in university, do not actually know. If you say to them, if I, and I am going to do this experiment, if I go on the streets and I ask a random person and I say, look, how much do you want? And they say, I want £80,000 a year, £100,000 a year. And I say, well, how much is that to you a month? Most people will not know the answer. And I am very sure of that. I agree with you because we've got a group chat and we were kind of discussing that recently. Yes. Um, there's this app that you can get called like salary calculator or something, right? And that definitely helps put it in perspective because then, you know, when you do the jump ups, you got a video by it as well. See, I've been binging your content today. <laughs> <laughs> you got a video by it where you like, when you got the rise to like 70 K you were yes. like thinking, yes, this is like big money. And then when you see exactly. it, it translates as like a few hundred pound extra from where you were. Exactly. And that's exactly. even at that amount, because obviously the tax increases, 
Yes. And so that's the realization that everyone gets, I guess. And then it's like and the reality is, bro, and just to give people an idea, and I think this is very important. If you get a basic salary of £25,000 a year, okay, you left university now, you're on £25,000 a year. You're making probably about £16,000, £1,700 take home. Obviously, it depends on if you've got student loans or not. £16,000, £1,700 take home. Okay. This is an exclusive now. Now, it's going to take you one or two years to get promoted, right? And so obviously now you're not going to get £30,000 a year after. It takes some time. Let's say you get £30,000 in two years. Okay, but now you need to start thinking about marriage and your wedding costs and stuff like that. So your expenses will increase. So twenty-five to £30,000 is probably another £300 extra, okay, a month to you. But your responsibilities have increased, right? Now it's going to take you another two, three years to get to 30, 35, or let's say even £40,000 a year. Okay, let's say forty thousand pound a year. You've absolutely killed it, nailed it, and from you know uh, in two three in two three years, you've got yourself to forty thousand pound a year. Well, now you have a wife. Now you have responsibilities, bills, council tax, rent, electricity, gas. Listen, we already know what Boris is talking about. So gas and electricity is just gonna kill you. So now forty thousand pound a year. You're looking at about two four two thousand four hundred pound. So look at the increases now. Thirty is about two thousand. Okay, two thousand pound. 40 is 2,400, right? If you have a student loan, for example. So now your responsibilities have increased. You now have why, you have bills, you have everything like that. You are not increasing, you are not going up. And then when you have children, let's say you get to 50, 60, 70,000. The point is for every 10,000 pound, we know as someone who, I know as someone who has worked in the corporate environment, a 10,000 pound pay increase is crazy you have to work very hard for it you have to you know it's it's a lot of work but the reality is it's three or four hundred pound extra to you a month and so you know it and that's the reality that people do not know and exactly just, yeah. you know it's just not informed mm. so i would recommend people do the calculation you don't have to um do the calculation you can get one of the maps and do the numbers <laughs> i always say i always say when it comes to everything uh, do the numbers because people do not do the numbers when it comes to business, when it comes to, you know, uh, your wages, your taxes, do just do the numbers. Yeah. And that's definitely, and then that's not even factoring in the potential Islamic issues that you have with working in a corporate environment. So all this is just speaking from a, like just a logical kind of number numerical yes. basis. We've yes. not even got into like the yes. other elements, right? We don't really need to go into them too much because everyone who's going through that if they care they experience yeah. it and they know what we're talking about yeah. and with that there are obviously <clears throat> as muslims there's always steps that you can take right and it depends you have to make the best of your situation so one thing i was thinking about is like and you've mentioned it in a video is like you can potentially mitigate the haram effects let's say by like being more antisocial or being like that develop that character where you're like unapologetic you don't really care what people say and that's part of the dean as well like you know the hadith about strangers and obviously not caring that much about what that other people yeah exactly so that's part of it but most people from my experience aren't able to do that these yeah. days everyone wants to fit in right everyone yes. they, they struggle to even kind of say anything about the religion you know what i mean because they don't want to and they're not maybe not educated about it but they don't want to put themselves in that position of awkwardness or whatever else so as much as you can do certain things that like i remember um i was working for a muslim um like the director of muslim but that's only within my field within that niche i guess you can't find that everywhere and then you can do little things like i remember i was staying there one of the factors was that muslim environment prayer room extra time for juma so i made the best of the situation and then yes. now you've got work from home and stuff so i feel like would you not say though bro that the internet has brought benefits in terms of like aside from the negatives look now you've got work from home less capital to start businesses so what would you say kind of on that whole using the changing times and internet to kind of i think there's more harm than good if if we're being completely honest i think there's a lot of harm in the internet than good sheikh munafaymin rahimullah speaks about this and uh, I remember listening to one of his uh, khutbah, uh, one of his uh, talks, uh, and the reality is, I think, in truth, as someone who is obviously puts content out, I think there's a lot of harm in it. But of course, like, look, if if we were given the now we have it, there's a lot of good in it as well. It just depends on how you use it. But mm -hmm. it just, I guess, it's it's you know, 
Now, obviously, yes, 100%, we're able to, a lot of people are, for example, able to work remote jobs. And in fact, companies aren't even happy for you to be in a completely different country and work a remote job, uh, which is crazy, which is amazing. I guess like remote working now has become even more of a thing after COVID. Um, as someone who's in recruitment, I know that. And that's the reality of it. Yeah. So you can, arguably, you can make hijra with a remote job, isn't it? You're you still can. tied to that, but it's possible. And I was watching a YouTube channel by another brother you've got content on this as well that i wanted to speak about at the end he moved to pakistan mm-hmm. um and he goes through the entire process of like negotiating setting up a limited company and all the rest of the small steps even the cargo yes. elements and stuff like that so the next thing i wanted to ask you about is or oh, one thing I, I was going to touch on is like you have to make the best of your situation and like now if you do have the opportunity to work from home i think like sisters especially should take that opportunity like you might not even if you have to take a little bit of a hit getting into like the controversial territory I guess but like even if you have to before they're like oh it's a necessity okay fair enough right but it's not a necessity to what I'm trying to say is you can definitely make use of these avenues to make things better for yourself and your akhira isn't it Mm -hmm. And I would say, and I would just say, just to add to that as well, that, you know, there, there is a clear difference between a necessity and like, look, like if it's a case of where the sister, I think the truth is we've become a snowflake society where the haram has become so apparent that it's become acceptable. And I think it's, you know, we do have to, we do have to understand um, that, look, and I, and I talk about this a lot and I say it to the man's role, it's the man's duty to earn for his wife and his family and so on and so forth. And so, um no man should expect his wife to work. If that is the case, then that is the wrong mindset because, um, you know, unfortunately that is a flaw between the brothers and we have to fix that. Um, I think the sisters, of course, there's definitely opportunities and ways you can work from home, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So yeah, it creates opportunities for the sisters to be able to do stuff as well. But also I think that just because of, you know, there are a lot of sisters now, for example, that do their online hustles, online businesses, you know, um, I know of many sisters that are doing really, really well, actually, you know, doing things at home. Now, I have to be clear in this and I have to make this, make this, uh, I have to, I have to say that it does not now mean that the sister is now unable to, or rather uh, not prioritizing the house and therefore the family and the children and so forth. You know, it's also, that's also not accepted because the priority is your, your children as well. Um, and I think that's very important. And I think, look, like as someone now who has a child, um, I am able to do what I do because my wife looks after my child. And I know he's being looked after by my missus because she's at home and she's looked after by me. So well, it's a circle, you know, your child is looked after mainly by your mother as well. Your father, the father would always have an input. But the father is not going to now, you know, constantly raise the child the way the mother does. Right. Um, but for the mother to be able to do that, the father has to look after the mother, basically. So Allah, mm. uh, Allah, is, Allah has uh, given us our roles because Allah knows best, basically. Exactly. Uh, and we realize that when we play our roles correctly. Mm. Uh, and I would say that a lot of the times the sisters get the stick for it, that our oh, sisters are, you know, they want to do this, they want to do that. Allah mustan, Allah, I, I genuinely believe if the men stepped up, if the men started earning and, and put, their, put the sisters in a position where they didn't need to work, subhanAllah, maybe the sisters would not be, you know, uh, the way they are as some, as sometimes. Okay. Um, the other thing I was thinking about is a lot of times people that go into, everyone has like a pain story um, in terms of when they make the jump. I was uh, on like um, one of these Muslim companies, they teach you how to make online Muslim business, right? Recently. And part of the sales thing was like pain points about not getting enough time for Juma and stuff like that. One thing I, I want to emphasize is touched on at the start is like if you're young, you can make do with it, but try and visualize the pain points to motivate yourself. Because otherwise you can get um, otherwise you can get a bit too comfortable. Yes. And then you might not even feel that you have to feed that motivation. What would you say for you? I know you mentioned like the first day you went for Salah when you started working. So did your planning start then? What was like the, in terms of the way you thought about it? How did you go, how did you go through the steps that like you always had it in your mind to work towards it? Or was there like a specific moment? I think for me, I've always been the sort of person to um, 
challenge myself more and more. Uh, and I think it was more of a case that um, I understood also that I didn't want to um, spend my life working a job, basically. I didn't want to be 50 years old, Allah must stand if Allah even allows me to live that long, but I didn't want to be 50 years old and my child says, what's the best memories you've ever lived? And it's never going to be my job, right? It's, but, but that's 60, about 75% of my time, right? Um, so I think it was just a case of, for me, it particularly, it was a case of like, I wanted to have, um, I wanted to be able to do what I am told to do in this world, which is worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do more. So yeah, for me, Allah is, is, is tough. For me, um, I always want to do more and that's not necessarily because of the money. Some people actually look at me, Allah, and, and I find it amusing, the, but they think that, oh, it's because I want more and more money. Allah, it's, it's not, if you actually knew my lifestyle, but I don't drive a car. If you see me like, like and maybe inshallah, I, I think I need to get a car anyway. But I haven't driven a car for like the last three, as in I haven't owned a car for the last three years. I'm not the sort of person who is actually like loves to buy a lot of things or anything like that. Mm. But but I enjoy it and I see it more of a enjoyment. So, you know, I'll set something up and four months later, I'll be like, oh, yeah, OK, that's set up now. And I want to set something else up. So I think it's something that I enjoy more than mm. anything. Yeah, that's definitely like a potential criticism that people get. That's why I wanted to put the disclaimer out there at the start, right? It doesn't really make a difference because those who want to complain will complain anyway. But I, I don't know if you've heard of, um, I know you're Pakistani, so you might have heard of Azad Jaiwala. Yeah, of course, of course. So he has that same thing. I love his content. He's, he's getting very big now. It's all Urdu focused and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But he often tries to emphasize that because people have that mindset of like money is evil kind of thing, but it's how you use it. Yes, of course. And um, yeah, so and then the next thing that I wanted to kind of move on to is at the very least having uh, multiple sources of income. Um, it diversifies your risk, isn't it? Meaning yes, like... Yes. Diversifies your risk and your risk by the will of Allah, right? Because um, otherwise you're dependent. If you're on one source, like one manager has control over your whole livelihood. Yeah, I call it like an integrity buffer. You're going to be much more likely to do certain things that you might not be 100% comfortable with because yeah. your whole life depends on it kind of thing, right? Yeah. Well, it doesn't. It depends on Allah, but how we think sometimes. So that's definitely another point that we uh, should mention. Um, so now moving on to like the specifics, like it's more tactical kind of advice, right? So um, now say if a brother comes to you and says you probably always get this question right i want to start a side hustle i want to start a business whatever how do you approach that question because it's very kind of broad yeah it is broad it is broad the, to be honest with you the way i usually approach that is by asking them what they do what are their hobbies what they like what their interests are because in business you're always told to go for the fruits at the bottom of the tree rather than the top of the tree and in essence, what we're saying is like, look around you for things you could do and go for that before you start, you know, trying to reach for the stars as such. So if someone now comes to me and says, look, I want to, you know, it, it, it's not viable. Now, if someone comes to me and says, look, I've got no money, but I want to start a, a business and it's going to be X amount of investment, but I think this is the business, et cetera. It's always in steps. Look, you can always jump 10 steps, but things are always, you know, it's much easier to take a step at a time. So, for example, if today you're working a job, it's nine to five, that sort of thing. Well, like, I've got nothing against like someone working a job, by the way. It's important. And I actually recommend working a job for a little while because it teaches you many things that are very important. Um, but then what's your start thinking about your way out? So maybe now, for example, working self-employed. Um, is your, you know, the step up. And then from um, self-employed, I think we've got a 10 minute time on it, sir. Oh, no. I think, would we be, I think we'd be able to restart it, isn't it? Yeah, 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 of course we can. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, because I thought it was only for more than two participants, this, but, you know. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, when it shuts, no problem. We'll just, yeah, I'll get, cool. just the invite again, we'll just do another one. No problem. But, um, yeah, so I think, um, 
that's what it's about, Rob. So it's all about um, stepping up, going to the next step. Um, so what now working self-employed. So now, for example, you're doing something self-employed. It's a bit of a service. You know, you're limited, but your your time is your money, basically. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. maybe the step up is, okay, now I'm going to have another diversification where I'm making, you could even be making £200 a month from just something. But actually, if it doesn't mean um, you need to spend time on it, for example, uh, then that's, of course, also applaudable. So it's always in steps. And for me personally, to be honest with you, I would rather earn £10,000 not doing something than earn £50,000 working. Um, and so, yeah, it's just all about what you want to do as well. Mm, okay. Um, another interesting little topic. Again, like I said, these are just touch points. And the brothers got separate videos kind of on all these topics. So I'd recommend you check those out. Um, is this mindset of like, and I like the fact that one, you give motivational advice that is like, you need to work hard, be consistent. It's not all about, you know, like the little tips and tricks that people act like can change their life. It comes down to the main thing, which is essentially things like hard work and consistency and obviously having your trust in Allah. And so, and then what about, um, you've got some content on making money versus saving money. So I just wanted you to kind of talk about that for a couple of minutes. Sure. So saving money was something that I had been trying to do for a big part of my life. I've never been a good saver, by the way. So I guess um, maybe it's a bit, uh, it's like, of course, I would say this, right? I've never been a good saver. But what I, what I find is, look, if say today you're 21 years old, and you want to save money, you get a job and you're going to save money, right? Let's say you're doing really well and you save £500 every single month for a year. Now you have saved £6,000, right? Uh, if now you continue to save every single year £500 for 10 years, right? You've saved £60,000. So you would have saved for 10 years and you would have saved £60,000. By the way, if today I start saving £500 a month and I do it for a year, I get £6,000, right? From today, 10 years later, the buying power of that £60,000 is probably £40,000. And just for the audience, I'm sure you understand this, but just for the audience, and the example I give is obviously the chocolate you used to buy 10 years ago is not worth the same amount that it's worth today. Basically, the Coke can used to buy 10 years ago was 60p. And today, a lot of stand, I don't know, is maybe 1.20p sort of thing, you know? <laughs> I'm sure the chicken, the, the fish and chip shops are charging 1.50. So I'm like, chicken cottage yesterday was 1.50. So the point being is, if you now start saving money today, in 10 years time, the, the, the money you have saved will not be able to buy the same amount of things that it buys today. Today, what £100,000 is worth is not worth 10 years later. So now the point is, can you get financial freedom technically by just saving money? Well, no, I don't believe you can unless you're actually, you know, even if you save now, look, let's say a thousand pound a month, right? You're saving a thousand pound a month, which by the way, is a lot of money, right? And you do that for 10 years, that's 120,000 pound. In 10 years time, you probably won't even be able to buy a flat in Manchester, yet alone London. Of course you can't in London today, but in Manchester, you probably won't be able to just because of price prices going up and everything like that. So the point is, is it's very important to make, put, put your money into things, businesses, into investments, into side hustles, but understand that your money needs to be going out and bringing friends home. Because if your money's not bringing friends home, then the reality is it's only going down. Um, you know, look, at the end of the day, lot, I think uh, salaries have gone up 0.5%. But inflation has gone up, you know, 7% in the last year. And of course, this is a bad year, COVID and everything like that. But inflation on average is going up, you know, 4 or 5% every year. What that means, by the way, is the things that you are buying are going up 4 or 5%, right? So just to stay uh, break even, you have to be making 4 or 5% on your money. If you're just saving, your money's going down. Um, so that's why it's very important to have businesses, invest, side hustles, make your money, make friends, that sort of thing. Jazakallah mm. khairan. Um, on that topic then of like make money, I think part of that is investing in yourself, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether that's like 
courses or um yeah courses essentially but i'm thinking um of other things as well like there's more than that of course you could do like even even for example look you might now book a call with someone who actually has a lot to offer look at the end of the day i could now book a call with someone pay him a thousand pound for one hour which might sound ludicrous to someone by the way but for me that might make a lot of sense because Maybe, and just to give the audience an idea, maybe, and this, these aren't the numbers, maybe, for example, my businesses are making X amount, and that is, I don't know, let's say, for example, 20 grand a month. Okay, they're making 20,000 pound a month, and I spend a thousand pound for an hour call with someone who's making 200,000 pound a month. By the way, guys, like, this is very important to understand as well. You know, when I say these numbers, people sometimes look at me like, you, you're crazy when I say, oh, yeah, there's someone making 200,000 pound a month that's 2.4 million pound a year there are a lot of people making that sort of money and when i say a lot of people that elite of course but there are people making that money it's not it's not impossible people are doing it right so now i might pay the person a thousand pound for an hour but what they are offering me or the, the information they give me in that hour might help me generate my business sales from 20,000 to even 21,000 now if it helps me increase by 1,000 pound a month, I've made £12,000 back. And so, yes, you have to, courses is is one thing, right? Courses are, I would say, like, just about getting you started in the reality of it. But then you have to start, you know, investing in like maybe mentorships, calls, like speak to, I would happily, if I could now, if, okay, if Alan Sugar had uh, something where he was like, look, guys, you can call me up. Honestly, today, if he did something, I would give the guy five thousand pound to book a call with him for an hour. I would. Mm, that's good. Yeah, I wanted to talk about this because I think once you've got started, it makes sense. But you know that whole your whole what you just said in the last two minutes for some people, it's not going to click until they're yes. into it. Yeah, and yeah, the, the reason I say that is because like I recently was having this conversation with someone on Instagram um, about like online marketing and stuff like that and um the the kind of thing is like it's about how much you value your time as well because think about it you can all the information is out there for free youtube whatever you can do it yourself but in terms of it comes down to how much you value your time because you can either get the recipe shortcut kind of thing by someone who's already doing it gone through all the mistakes for fee that's in consideration of that or you can try and do it yourself. If you feel like you want to do it yourself, go ahead. But me personally, I have benefited from uh, no like massive courses online, but I have benefited from courses for everything. Like when I was starting YouTube channel, the animations um, and then loads of other stuff as well. Right. And I think it's a, it's a shift because in our generation now, more and more people are starting to buy online and it'll only increase. But there was a time where everyone was skeptical of anything online. And some people still have that mindset. And that's going to shift, isn't it? Like it's, it's only. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's, I think it's important to see. I think the problem is unfortunate because we've seen a lot of people now take advantage initially of this courses mindset and people have maybe lost money and, and invested their money and, you know, they haven't, you know, seen a return as such. And when I mean return, return and even knowledge, for example, um, that people are understandably uh, skeptical, but I think, you know, it's important because look, if someone now has spent 10 years doing something and they teach you that something that they've done 10 years in, in 10 hours, then there's a, you know what I mean? It makes sense. There's a fee for it. And at the end of the day, that would be amazing. So mm. yeah, hundred percent. I think it, it just, I would definitely like, I would hundred percent do courses if I could learn from these top people and stuff like that. hundred percent. It's completely worth it. Exactly. Yeah, so just before um, the recording cut off, we were talking about investing in yourself and benefiting from online resources and whatnot. Um, Just on that as well, um, sometimes you can't appreciate the relative value, like we were saying, unless you're in it. You're in that recruitment business, so you understand the value of it. A smaller example that I can give is last year I started like just a basic kind of retail arbitrage eBay selling thing, right? did it all based on free information there's just like a group that you have to join and whatnot but because initially i was quite skeptical but once i kind of figured it out and was working on it consistently on the side and it's kind of built up 
and now I see it as like a definite kind of source of income. Now, if someone was to present themselves and say, look, I've got a course, it's going to cost you £500, but I'm yeah. going to tell you A to Z how to do it in one month. Do you get me? It feels a lot more appealing to me or even more than that. Because you see it, you view it from the lens of like a multiple of the potential income that you can get. Yes. Whereas if you've not started, like, and someone just tries selling you a course, you think right. like, oh, it's too much money kind of thing. So, okay, bro, I wanted to ask you about like um, online marketing in general, right? <laughs> Obviously, as Muslims, we can say that, but as Muslims, there is like a level of there is like a level of ethics as well that we kind of have to hold ourselves to so just wanted your general take on this because you're in it um is what do you think about like the click funnels formula because i'll give you a little story and then i want your take on it right um and i think we have to have husnod done as well and the reason i say that is because oftentimes there's shayuk and scholars that aren't very well versed in online marketing right themselves because they got no reason to do so they've come from syria or wherever else after learning right and they'll hire some young guy who's like the local kid who knows a bit of marketing and he's like shake i know this i'll do it and the young guy russell um, russellbrunson.com click funnels right nothing necessarily wrong with it but it'll be the standard formula of like you know all the psychological techniques that are designed to get more sales right which again nothing wrong with if you use it within reason but it'll be like look this course on how to get married is yeah. worth five thousand five thousand pounds and then you're going to get 12 live classes that's worth this much totals 20 grand today you're getting it for 500 pound and it's finishing in the next two hours that like, you know all them basic scarcity tactics and and people sometimes put the blame on whoever the figurehead shayuk is or sheikh is when really they don't really understand and they they might review it and change it but they they're not really fully um grasping or they're not fully aware of what's gone on potentially they should be but i just wanted to kind of put that out there and then i wanted to think like what do you think about just generally marketing ethics and like how to market something like that where have you thought about that yourself kind of thing just want you to talk about that so do you mean so okay so are we here now discussing us because obviously now if we say marketing generically yeah yes of course we have to you know be ethical and and, and stuff like that but what is your question specifically about that example yeah let's say specifically about because that's actually quite common i don't know if you've seen it but like um, his click funnels uh, thing the tactics is it's a very kind of common thing that someone who sells online would come across um yes. so i wanted you to just speak on that specifically as well so so i wouldn't do it and i wouldn't advise it um and the simple reason for that is is look if you are saying now that no, that is the case. Because look, a lot of the times, if we're being very sincerely honest, the whatever it is, is not worth it, 20,000, whatever it is, right? Let's say 20,000 pound. Generically speaking, it's not worth 20,000 pound. The individual knows that, right? And then when they're saying 500 pound, you know what I mean? There, there, is, there is an element of, there is an element of that's not truthful. Uh, look, I'm not saying it's haram because it's not for mm. me to say. Well, I mm. the truth is it's not for me to say. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't advise it. If someone asked me, I would say, look, avoid it. And I also genuinely believe, by the way, I genuinely think it isn't actually good marketing. Well, I, I actually think it's not good marketing because mm. I think marketing has moved on from that now where honesty um, and clarity is much better than... Um, these tactics and what i mean by that is for example if i turn around and say look guys um you know i'm never making this cheaper for example or uh, this is x this is not going to be cheaper this is what it's worth and it's worth this because of this and you know you know and you're very for example let's say something is a thousand pound right and you say, look, I can't make this cheaper. I can't give you sales and offers and all that. If you continuously put on sales and offers and stuff, then, you know, even people will feel like whatever they're buying isn't worth the value that they're paying for, for example, right? But if you now had something for a thousand pounds and you said on an odd occasion, on a very odd occasion, you said, guys, 
odd occasion for one day only, I'm going to take off 10%, right? People will still see like that as, oh, wow, that is a good, like, that's a good deal. Like, this must be of value. But if you now, for example, something's a thousand pound and you say, today I'm going to take off 50% and now it's 500 pound, even the person buying would be thinking, well, was it really ever worth a thousand pound then? You know what I mean? Like, is it really that good? Like 50% down? So like, it's like, uh, have you ever seen, have you ever seen, bro, like, uh, think about it yourself. Have you ever seen like designer brands? Like when I say maybe the odd occasion, but 50% off, you know, mm. like designer bands in, 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 in design, in, in the elite shops. Have you ever seen them take off like 50%? Who no. do you think of sports? Who do you think of when you take off 50%? Sports Good. direct, <laughs> right? sports direct, they, they do no, that. No, not 50, like, 80. Yeah, exactly. Sports direct yeah. be taken off 90%, bro. A lot of them start, I don't know how they make money, but the point is, is uh, you don't necessarily want to be known as that either, to be honest, I in my opinion. And well, like, again, there is no right and wrong because it's the dunya, bro. You can be wrong, you can be right. It's just an opinion. Yeah, yeah, true. And obviously some people have, I sometimes subscribe to the view as well that ultimately the market will decide. Like yeah. if you've got your intention right and you're not outwardly like trying to scam people, yes. um, there's only a certain amount of time before the feedback comes back, like chickens come home to roost kind of thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. now uh, more specifically, I just wanted to talk about your current kind of business and like mm -hmm. your plans for it, um, where you plan to take, if you're comfortable kind of talking about yeah, that, no um, where you plan to take it forward kind of thing. Um, okay. So my situation and all that, you're getting exclusive right now, my bro. But to be honest with you, I haven't shared this with many people. Uh, I have inshallah plans to obviously move out of the country. I think that I've made quite obvious. Uh, I know you want to talk about Pakistan, so maybe we'll talk about that shortly. But um because I am planning on moving out of the country, uh, may I make it easy, but my main reason for mm -hmm. moving out of the country is also to seek ilm, basically. Uh, and so it's important for me to be making money, uh, in essence, when I sleep, okay? In essence, because I want time. I think I'm, va I'm trying to value time a lot more, for example. So I am automating or trying to automate my business, my recruitment company in particular, as much as I can. Uh, where I don't necessarily need to put in that many hours. So now, Alhamdulillah, we have a you know I have a recruitment manager who basically manages everything and looks after things and it's someone I trust, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you know I'm employing people to manage that and you know look after that process. But that's obviously one business that everyone knows about. There are other businesses that people do not know about. Um, so you know there's there, there are things at the moment that are even in the pipeline. Pipeline. I haven't actually discussed this with anyone, but I'll let you in on it as it's inshallah launching in about two weeks. Um, <laughs> but it's basically uh, an e-learning platform, inshallah, that will be launching, um, which in essence is uh, you may know of Udemy and Skillshare. Yeah. And so the idea is because I have a recruitment company and therefore I have access to a lot of people, um, Udemy and Skillshare or these companies, a lot of the times anyone and everyone can record a course. So mm. you and I could record a course. I could record a course about accounting and not actually know something about accounting. Mm. I'm yeah. not saying that people do do that, but that is the reality of it. Mm. So uh, I'm basically, in essence, it's a platform where experts, I'm paying experts, they're, we're recording what they know we're putting it on the platform, that sort of thing. Similar to Masterclass, if, any, if you know about Masterclass. Masterclass basically is a platform where uh, it's very good. It's like the elite. So it's like the top of the top. Uh, talk about what they know. Mm. Um, this is, I guess, in the middle of two, basically. And the idea is obviously as Muslims, um, I think the problem sometimes is we end up learning things which Islamically are not permissible. So the good thing is that I'm trying to, as I'm behind it, uh, making sure that everything that is being taught that is within Sharia, basically. Mm. And is it going to be non-Islamic topics as well? Uh, by non-Islamic, non everything comes Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not actually Islamic topics anyway. Okay. It, okay. So it's like marketing, you know, photography, uh. videography. It's everything in terms of the business and dunya side in terms of how you can progress. But mm. obviously, as I'm behind it, I will obviously try to keep it as Sharia possible, as within the Sharia as, as possible as I can. Mm, inshallah I, I, uh, I wouldn't go outside yeah inshallah it goes well for you brother i pray that it's oh. a success um jazakallah for letting everybody letting us in on that as well um just finishing off now then um in terms of 
um, I'm interested in this idea of moving Pakistan. So as yeah. I understand it, have you already got a setup in Pakistan in terms of an office? Because I did no, watch that. I saw that video, but I don't think I watched the whole. There isn't a setup right now. No, okay. there isn't a setup right now. Uh, there are things that happen in Pakistan, but no, there is not a setup. If, mm. if, if yeah, we're being completely transparent. No, there isn't a, uh, a setup as such. So is that your, your plan when you say go to a country and seek Ilm? Are you referring to Pakistan? So again, you're getting a lot of exclusive. <laughs> it's because but I'm kind of up to date because I, I I went through some most I'd say a lot of your content. Well, to be honest with you, a lot is to be if I'm very if honest, bro, a lot is a lot has been going on within my life which I haven't actually shared anyway. Just from the avenue of the the truth was I was looking at Pakistan. I was fully set on moving to Pakistan, and that was the plan for the last two years. Mm. Uh Allah, my shafal Allah is the best of planners. Um just because of the recent change in government, uh, the recent change that's been happening in Pakistan, it got me questioning it, not to say I was against the idea, it got me questioning it. And then it was just the fact that, would I really want to leave my uh, child and my wife and my family alone and go to another country? The, the truthful answer is no, I wouldn't want to do that. My setup in Pakistan is also, um, Look, one of the biggest reasons I'm attracted to Pakistan is because actually my setup is very easy. My family and friends in Pakistan, you can say are, are part of the, the, the rich, basically, right? Mm. So because of that, I only see the good in Pakistan. Um, having said that, there is, that comes with a negative because uh, the deen is not that close to the people in Pakistan either. Maybe the people that are around me and such. So now, um, inshallah, I am in the process of maybe looking at the UAE uh, and Sharjah in particular. Uh, but again, we leave it to Allah and Allah is the blessed of planners. Uh, I, I, the truth is, uh, I am planning on leaving the country next year, uh, early next year, end of this year. Uh, and inshallah, obviously, the idea is to leave to Muslim lands and, and mm. basically seek ilm, to be honest. Uh, so wherever that is, Allah, it could even turn out to be Pakistan. Mm. I'm, you know, my wife always says, I don't know what you're thinking and what's going on in your head. You're just going to tell me anyway. Mm. So two weeks later, the idea, the plan might change. We leave it to Allah. We try. I tie the camel and then we leave it to the Have trust in Allah, Allah. Yeah. Yeah. So I was thinking along those lines because for me, um, for similar reasons, it makes sense, Pakistan. Um, and we have a better idea of like the costs involved. You've got a good video where you're breaking down some of the costs as yeah. well. Um, but again, I like the idea of adopting something that within a circle is quite common, like make hijrah, but amongst the general Muslim population is still like a very, uh, what's the word, like a very rare kind of idea, of isn't it? So it's good something to think about and it gives you some motivation to have like yeah. a long term plan as well. Um, so, yeah, I would say that kind of brings what I wanted to ask to a close. Um, Jazakallah khairan for Bye. your time uh, It was good, I enjoyed it And I think that's the benefit It's like a bit selfish as well in that But I know other people are going to be thinking the same things So that's why I like to Just be guided by the interest that I have um, no, I that. And I really um, Benefited as well And I'm going to continue following your content We'll link it all um, okay. In the description And um there's also, I just wanted to say that you are doing a course on recruitment as well. Mm -hmm. So do you want to talk about that? And um, if people are interested, they can. Um... Yeah, I guess like, look, like, I think basically what ended up happening is I was putting out content and then a lot of people were asking, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? And I would say, look, I've got my own recruitment company. People would ask me the question, well, how, how do we do that as well, basically? And I think it's one of those. It's like, it's like going to a doctor and say, how do I become a doctor, right? The doctor can't just tell you, do this, this, this and you'll become a doctor, basically. It's, it's difficult. And not to say mm. it's as in-depth as becoming a doctor, but the yeah. point being, is it's unfortunately, I can't just give that information over five minutes or 10 minutes, right? Um, so because of that, because of the questions and the demand that I kept getting, I created a course, basically, um, which basically it's for the beginners it's for mediocre you know intermediate anyone really should be able to set up their own company it's a 16 it's 16 hours of content basically 
It's mm. ATP classes, basically. So it's a lot of content. Mm. Uh, but yeah, if anyone wants to start their own recruitment company, basically, or is interested in that, then I do have a course on that. Jazakallah mm. khairan. And once again, that brings the interview to a close. Um, thoroughly enjoyed you being here. And hopefully in, in a couple of years when there's like some new developments and we'll have you on, I can Shalala. invite you on again, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم